Greetings, chem students. My name's Ryan, and today I'm going to tell you how to get your lab notebook ready to perform your experiments. Each experiment you'll perform has a background and procedure document that's posted on the course webpage. You can find these by going into Assignments, opening the assignment for the lab you're going to perform, and clicking the link for that experiment's procedure document. These documents look like this, and they all follow the same basic structure. Right up front, there's a hazards and information section. These always start with a reminder of what personal protective equipment you'll need, which always includes goggles and a lab coat, and most often gloves as well. Then there's various bits of information on the reagents you're going to work with, and what hazards they have. For example, hydrochloric acid, or HCl, is corrosive and can cause damage to your eyes which is why you have to keep your goggles on at all times in the lab. Further down, there's a reminder of what to do with your lab's waste, and a list of the more significant pieces of equipment you'll be working with. This is followed by the student learning objectives. These are basically an overview of the skills and knowledge you'll get out of this experiment. Next up is the background, where we describe how the experiment works and give you the knowledge you'll need to carry it out. Since the theme of this lab is numerical measurements, there's a passage here on how to take these measurements, a primer on significant figures, and something about interpolation and how to do it. There's also some information on volumetric flasks, which is one of the pieces of glassware you would use in this experiment. Following the background are instructions for completing your pre-lab summary. Now, the pre-lab is one of the three major sections of a lab report, and you have to have it completed in your notebook before you arrive for your tutorial. The second section of a report is the data, which you'll also write in your notebook and is due when you leave lab. And the third is the post-lab, which is usually due the week after you performed the experiment. Anyway, the pre-lab consists of three parts. The first is a summary in which you will, as the name implies, summarize your experiment and or its individual parts. The procedure in this lab consists of two parts. In part A, you would cut a piece of wood off a dowel measure its length, height, and width and then use a balance to measure its mass. However, for the overall goal of this part, we need to go to the post-lab section which is where we find that we're going to take the data we get from lab and use it to calculate the block's density. And that's what the goal of part A is. So, for this pre-lab question, you'd write something like, the goal of part A is to determine the density of a wooden block we will make. Although you won't actually perform this particular lab I'm going over, it is part of an assignment in which you'll learn how to complete pre-labs for the experiments you will do. As part of this assignment, you will have to write out the summary statement for this experiment's Part B. That is, you have to determine what the goal of Part B is and record it. Make sure to write this in your notebook for submission. Next, we have the second part of the pre-lab, lab safety. The information you'll need to complete this part can be found in the first section of the procedure document I went over earlier. The third part of the pre-lab is the procedure and data section. As it says right in the assignment, you have to write out the procedure steps you'll need to take to complete the experiment in your notebook, and also have space, or a template, for your data section. You don't have to write out every single sentence that's in the original procedure document verbatim to do this. You just have to write it out well enough that you can effectively perform your experiment. As you do this, keep in mind you won't be allowed to bring a printed copy of the procedure with you to lab and you can not look it up on your phone or laptop either. You can bring a calculator with you, but no phones or laptops. Let me show you what a written out procedure might look like by comparing the original procedure to what I would write in my own notebook. Here's the original procedure on the left, and my own procedure in my own notebook on the right. As you can see, I've got the essentials of the procedure recorded, but there are some things I've left out. For example, there's a note in the original here that specifies it's not necessary to make the block exactly three inches long. And in my written procedure, I've indicated this to myself by just underlining the word approximately. For measuring the mass, 
The original procedure says I need to use a balance and to record my data to the correct number of significant figures, but I've left that out of my own procedure. The reason for this is, to me it's kind of a given I need to use a balance. There's nothing else in the lab room you could use to measure the mass. And since I've read the background on recording significant figures, which you should too, by the way, I already know I have to record my mass data to the correct number of figures. Now that's not to say you shouldn't include information like that. If you think you might forget it and need the reminder, then by all means go ahead and throw it in. The point is you can customize the procedure you make for yourself and write it out in whatever way helps it make the most sense to you. To the right of the procedure, I've got a data template built out with the kinds of data I would need to record. From the original procedure, I know I need the blocks height, width, and length, so I've got spaces for those. And then below, there's a space for the block's mass. One thing that's not here are the units. If you know what those are ahead of time, you can include them in your data template, or you can write them down when you record your data. The important thing is that at some point they have to be there. For example, if I measure the mass of my block and I find it's 48.747 grams, I would write 48.747 lowercase g and not just 48.747. Now that you know what a procedure should look like when it's written out in your lab notebook, to complete your pre-lab training exercise, you have to write out a procedure and data template of your own for Part B. Although it's not part of your pre-lab exercise, I do want to say a few things about the post-lab assignments. The instructions for these are at the end of each procedure document, and they include all the questions you need to answer and topics you need to address for your post-lab. Unlike the first two sections, which are written out by hand in your lab notebook, you'll complete your post-lab electronically and submit it online. When you go to depict your math operations, use Word's Equation Editor to write them out. For example, if I wanted to multiply 5 by 1 half, I'd use the Equation Editor to depict it like this. There's a document that will help you use the Equation Editor on the course webpage. For this assignment, after you've written out your summary and procedure for Part B, take a picture of it and submit it to the assignment area for this exercise. You can submit this as a JPEG, or make a PDF of your image and submit that. The assignment area on the course webpage will include a submission tool you can use to upload your work. All you have to do is click Start Assignment, then browse for the right file, then submit. Oh, oops, need to agree to the EULA. Okay, now submit. And that's how you write out your pre-labs and complete your post-labs. If you have any questions, you can ask your TA for assistance during their office hours.